Hi everyone and welcome back to another video of ISTQB training test automation engineer certification. So in last session we started the third module which is the generic test automation structure and today we will continue with the overview of the GTA which is the generic test automation architecture. So when we talk about uh, test automation architecture, it is a critical foundation element in achieving our test automation goals. But unfortunately, most of the time, our focus is only on automation. We just need to automate everything and enough effort is not put in in the automation planning and its architecture, etc., which is really, really is the key thing. It's just like if we take an example of building a house. So when we build a house, we we plan everything uh, that what kind of house we need to build, how many people will live in it and number of rooms, etc. And in fact, uh, there is also a room left for the future expansion as well. Uh, we don't do it like that. We just build one room at a time and then keep on building other rooms as required. So similarly, uh, we need to um, deal with the test automation architecture in a similar manner. OK, so the like, for example, the key inputs which plays an important role in automation architecture are the um, test requirements and uh, evolving requirements, especially in agile projects and identifying that who are the key stakeholders, understand the product and its usage, um, the technical support required for automation, for example, tool sets, etc., uh, test environments, test data, what types of testing uh, needs to be automated, like functional, non-functional, etc. So architecture of the test automation is just as the architecture of any software uh, development product and it should be treated in the same manner. So when we are designing and implementing test automation, there are four main layers which needs to be considered. And these are test generation, test definition, test execution, and test adaptation. Okay, so over here we have uh, a diagram which has been taken from ISTQB uh, syllabus for test automation engineer certification and this basically shows um, the test automation with all these four horizontal layers and uh, if you see over here on the bottom it shows the test automation framework okay so According to this generic uh, test automation architecture, a test automation framework may consist of the um, test adaptation, uh, execution, and test definition layers, right? So over here, as you can see, the test generation layer is part of test automation um, platform, but might not be part of test automation framework because usually the test generation layer is being seen as as separate from the test automation framework okay so now we will um, go uh, in the further uh, sessions we will also go through all these layers in much much detail but uh, in today's session let's just have an overview of all these layers okay so let's start with the first one which is the test generation layer okay so now this layer um, in a generic test automation architecture supports manual or automated design of test suites or test cases Okay, so this layer is basically associated with uh, tooling and methodology and it helps us design effective tests. And as you can see that it says manual design and test models. So uh, when it comes to the designing of testing, it can be manual as well or it can be automated too. So it supports the manual or automated design of test cases, as we just mentioned, and also it provides the means for designing the test cases. So manual design, test models, these both are part of test generation layer. 
as i said earlier as well that in further videos we will cover all these uh, layers um, individually as well in much more detail so today we'll be just going through an overview of these okay so the next one is test definition layer okay so this test definition layer as you can see it consists of test conditions test cases test procedures test data test library so this layer supports the test case or test suite implementation and this is the place where we uh, specify all the test conditions and test cases at various levels of detail um, along with if there is any test data and procedures etc so it supports the definition and implementation of test suites and or test cases it separates the test definition from the sut and or test system technologies and tools so if uh, whatever the system uh, which we are testing system under test um, this is uh, this separates it uh, from that system because this is this layer is where we specify all of our test cases test conditions etc it contains means to define high level and low level test which are handled in the test data test cases test procedures and test library components or combinations thereof okay so typically early in a project uh, we decide that whether we need to write high level test cases or low level test cases so high level test cases are also known as abstract and low level are also known as detailed so it all depends on the um, depending on many factors like maybe the requirements and how much time do you have uh, for testing allocated for that project etc so uh, based on that you define um, the tests are defined in this layer Okay, so the next one is test execution layer and it includes test execution, test logging and test reporting. So this is the layer in the uh, generic test automation architecture which supports the execution of test suites. So we have defined the test suites earlier and uh, in this layer now we are executing it and um, it uh, then also provides the test logging and reporting as well. Okay, it supports the execution of test cases and test logging as we already covered, provides a test execution tool to execute the selected test automatically and a logging and reporting component. Okay, and now the fourth layer is test adaptation layer. So it says provides the necessary code to adapt the automated test for the various components or interfaces of the system under test provides different adapters for connecting to the SUT via APIs, protocols, services, etc. Okay, now this uh, layer, this is essentially the interface layer, like it can be API, it can be uh, GUI, it can be um, services, etc. to our component application or system under test. And this is where the functionality is implemented, which is uh, required to interface with the technology implementations that we need to test. And uh, so now we have covered these four layers. In relation to test automation, it also has interfaces for project management, configuration management, and test management. Okay, so uh, we have covered the main four horizontal layers for GTA, but these things, these are the, but our test automation platform, it also interface with the other workflow systems which are such as project management test management or configuration management systems so that's why these are also very very important uh, like for example if we have our test automation platform and then it has to integrate with uh, interacts with any project management tool like jira or any test management tool like for example zephyr or uh, x-ray or qtest or any other one or maybe configuration management like it needs to interact with github uh, so that's why uh, though they are these are not the main part of the test automation platform but these are an integral components uh, with which um, 
our test automation platform uh, interacts with. So these are also key things which we need to take care of. Okay, so uh, I hope that uh, the overview, you have got an overview of the generic test automation architecture. And uh, so as we can see that all these layers in the architecture, uh, they are separate. These are separate layers, but at the same time, they need to be integrated in order to ensure uh, maintainability and scalability of our test automation platform. Okay, let's proceed further. The interfaces between the GTAA layers and their components are typically specific and therefore not further elaborated here. Okay, so of course, when uh, we have gone through the main layers, but the interfaces between the layers and their components, of course, these are specific to each product. And that's why uh, these are just mentioned generically over here rather than going into much detail. It is important to understand that these layers can be present or absent in any given test automation solution. So if we are talking about, this is an overview. This is um, like a generic test automation architecture as the name states. So if we are um, talking about any test automation solution of any product, then it's not necessary that all these layers need to be there. It all depends that what is required in that test automation solution. For example, if the test execution is to be automated, the test execution and the test adaptation layer need to be utilized. They do not need to be separated and could be realized together, means that they can be implemented together, for example, in unit test frameworks. So as, as it says that if, we, if the test automation solution, uh, we need to automate test execution, then of course we, just, we might just need the test execution and adaptation layer. Similarly, if the test definition is to be automated, the test definition layer is required because we are automating that layer. If the test generation is to be automated, then the test generation layer is required. Mostly bottom to top approach is used to implement test automation solution, but other approaches can be used as well. For example, test generation for manual test. Okay, so it's not necessary that whenever we are implementing our test automation solution, we always implement bottom to top, top approach. It can be top to bottom as well. It all depends that uh, what kind of uh, solution we are automating and uh, what works well for that. Because sometimes um, uh, what we try to do is that if we have a tool set, then we just uh, try to accommodate everything around it. So which might not work well uh, for that specific test automation solution. So we always need to uh, see that what works, what which approach works well for our uh, test automation solution. It is advised to implement the test automation solution in incremental steps, for example, in sprints in order to use the TA uh, TAS as soon as possible and to prove the added value of the TAS. Right. Okay. So especially in sprints, when we are working in the beginning, we don't have all um, defined and finalized requirements. As we proceed with these sprints in the project, um, the requirements keeps on evolving. And that's the same thing we need to do with our test automation solution as well. In the beginning, we just can't define everything for a test automation solution. So that's why we need to, it's better that we implement it in incremental steps as we proceed with our sprints. Also proof of concept are recommended as part of test automation project. So whenever we are um, automating any, any project and uh, we have come up with a new framework, a new test automation solution, which might be uh, working for all, we are aiming to use for all projects in the same product line, it's always advised that we take a pilot project and then we see that what works for that um, and what doesn't. And so that can act as a proof of concept. Any test automation project needs to be understood 
set up and managed as a software development project and requires dedicated project management. So a test automation project is no different to any other project and it needs to be um, uh, to be managed in the same manner as we manage any other project. The project management for the test automation framework development can be separated uh, from the project management for the test automation solution. Okay, so what does that mean? So when we say the project management for the test automation framework development, so it might mean that we are talking about the um, test automation support for the entire company, for the whole organization, or maybe we are talking about all the projects um, under the same product line. Um, so that will be that can be separated from the project management for the test automation solution, which might be the test automation for a specific product as we already um, uh, we saw this in the last video uh, that the hierarchy is that we have a gen generic test automation architecture then we have uh, a test automation architecture for a specific test automation solution and test automation framework is basically supporting that test automation solution. So I hope that uh, this is clear. So with this, we have come to the end of today's session. So I hope that you have found this video useful and I will see you in the next video soon. Till then, take care.